Uh, hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Eleanor Turret bringing us breaking news, guys. This is from yesterday evening, but uh, I thought I'd bring it to you. Today, the Associated Press has just called the Massachusetts Republican primary race early, with John Deaton as the winner streets ahead of both Robert Antolides and Ian Kane. So now Deaton will go head to head with Senator Elizabeth Warren in November. And guys, look at that. John Deaton with 65.1% of the votes uh, trailing is Robert uh, Antolinis or Antonellis and Ian Kane with only 8.1%. It wasn't Ian Kane, uh, the, the Elizabeth Warren plant that they, uh, you know, decided to back. Things that make you go, hmm, you couldn't even get 10% of the vote. Anyway, it is good to see that John Deaton has won the primary and now it's going to be Deaton versus Elizabeth Warren. I cannot wait. <laughs> Wanted to thank uh, uh, Eleanor Turret for posting that. Michael Branch here bringing this to our attention, guys. We know XRP is heavily traded in Asian countries like Japan. Well, apparently another cryptocurrency exchange has added XRP support. You would think that, uh, you know, a lot of these exchanges would have probably already listed XRP at this point, especially in Japan. But uh, I'm, I'm guessing this is a fairly new exchange. In a recent tweet, Japanese cryptocurrency exchange CoinCheck announced the listing of the seventh largest cryptocurrency, XRP. Aside from that, the platform is listing five other cryptocurrencies, including Ethereum. Boy, you, you, have, you don't have Ethereum yet? Uh, Shiba Inu. Uh, NEM, XEM, uh, IOST, IOS, and EngineCoin, ENJ. The first X post announcing the upcoming listing of these digital assets was published by the platform in late August. CoinCheck holds the 48th place in the coin market cap list of crypto exchanges around the world. So again, uh, not a very uh, popular exchange, but they have uh, now listed XRP and a handful of other cryptocurrencies, including, uh, I'm guessing, Ethereum uh, and Shiba Inu. Interesting choices. The XRP listing comes after a major ripple win in the courts. Of course, uh, that probably did not have any bearing on uh, what Japanese uh, exchanges are listing. Nevertheless, guys, we are going to see a lot more volume for XRP this coming bull run. And, uh, you know, to get on to, uh, I mean, just depending on where you live in the world, to get on to, uh, you know, a variety of different types of exchanges, there are ways to do it. I'm highlighting all this and more at patreon.com slash working money channel for all my subscribers. I'm going to be listing uh, my strategy cash out plan, looking to pinpoint the top of the market. And, uh, you know, there are all kinds of different ways we can do this. I do only charge $5 a month, so I think it's a pretty affordable option for you guys if you want to follow my crypto journey. Again, that's patreon.com slash working money channel for those of you guys interested. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to thank Michael for posting that. Guys, we've got some more news here. MIT has noted Ripple as a useful blockchain in this most recent report regarding digital credentials. So this coming from their digital credential consortium, building the digital credential infrastructure for the future, a white paper by the digital credentials consortium here. And uh, here they talk about technology, how it's profoundly changing higher education, but the way we issue and manage academic credentials, which represents learning outcomes and achievements, has not yet taken advantage of the possibilities of digital technology. And so they go into some of their benefits. So uh, down here, it increases the efficiency of exchanging and evaluating credentials. It provides more reliable ways to protect and verify credentials, thereby reducing the opportunity for fraud. Uh, it also expands learners' control over their credentials, enabling a verifiable history of lifelong learning. Of course, uh, you know, doing this over the blockchain is uh, kind of the only way to do it. The Digital Con uh, Credentials Consortium was founded by leading universities with expertise in design of verifiable digital credentials. So some of those guys include uh, the Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands, Georgia Institute of Technology in the U.S., also Harvard, uh, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, McMaster University in Canada. Uh, there was another one here, the Hasso Plattner University in Germany, uh, Tecnologico de Mont uh, Monetari in Mexico, TU Munich in Germany, uh, UC Berkeley, of course, UC Irvine, the University of Toronto and University of Milano Bicocha in Italy. So um, guys, here they have it, public permission blockchains. So listing this as an example, these blockchain systems allow everyone with a connection to the internet to transact and see the transaction logged on the blockchain, but only a restricted amount of nodes can participate in the consensus mechanism. And they note Ripple here as a private version of the blockchain that can in fact do that along with Ethereum. So um, it is interesting to see, you know, different use cases. Of course, we did have uh, the video this morning, quite a, uh, a controversial video, I guess, uh, differing opinions in the XRP community about the use cases on the XRP ledger and the decision to pivot uh, to a different smart contract platform. If you guys didn't catch all that, I will uh, post it up here in the top right hand corner. But guys, it is, uh, you know, important to see more development on the XRP ledger. This is what is going to drive more demand for XRP and that 
eventually we'll get the price of XRP even higher than it is today. Now, Mike Manfield, guys, posting this. ACI Worldwide has collaborated with Red Hat on enterprise cloud payments. ACI Worldwide is one of those large Ripple partners. They're an innovator in global payment technology, and today they just announced a collaboration with Red Hat Incorporated, the world's leading provider of open source solutions to make ACI's cloud native enterprise payment platform available on any cloud infrastructure. So with this collaboration, ACI will help customers ease their migration to the cloud to better adapt to the rapidly evolving digital economy and power the next generation of payment services using Red Hat OpenShift and Powers Banks, Merchants, and billers with more flexibility and choice on how they wish to deploy their payment services, whether that is uh, on-premise or in the cloud or as a managed service. As a Red Hat partner, ACI gains access to Red Hat's open source portfolio of cloud-native artificial intelligence and hybrid cloud platforms. Uh, the collaboration will help ACI customers simplify payment operations, allowing them to deploy ACI's uh, enterprise payment platform on any cloud infrastructure and offering enhanced resiliency and scale while reducing operating costs. So it looks as though they are realizing, you know, this Ripple enabled company is really going to help this uh, this company here, Red Hat, make their process more streamlined and more efficient at the end of the day. Here is a quote, guys. We are excited to extend our collaboration by joining the Red Hat partner ecosystem. This coming from Scotty Perkins, head of product management at ACI Worldwide. We believe that this collaboration will be a game changer for many of our partners and customers to more easily reap the benefits of deploying payment services in the cloud, such as improving operational efficiency, accelerating the launch of new products, and ultimately driving growth. And a representative from Red Hat also commented, we look forward to collaborating with ACI to help deliver a mission-critical enterprise payment platform for customers globally. Uh, and they say, you know, at Red Hat, we are committed to supporting our partners and customers with a flexible, scalable enterprise-grade platform like Red Hat OpenShift helping them maximize innovation and reduce time to market while enabling the resiliency, performance, and service quality required by leading banks across the globe. So check that out, guys. ACI Worldwide and Red Hat uh, looking to partner together, of course, leveraging DLT technology, making uh, and streamlining payments. You know, this is what Ripple has done very, very well for a very long time. And I feel like, you know, they're not, um, they're not stopping it, but they are backing off a little. I think they're letting... Uh, the companies now kind of do their thing, kind of make their connections and collaborations and, uh, you know, let that flywheel effect take a life on of its own. Eventually, with the regulation, we are going to see more adoption of cryptocurrencies worldwide. And ACI is just one of those partners that is going to help foster that adoption. So some great news there coming from ACI. I wanted to thank Mike for posting that. Guys, I also happen to see this, another Ripple partner, DLocal. They are partnering up with Kiwi.com. Kiwi actually selected Ripple partner DLocal to expand their payment options. Cross-border payment platform DLocal has announced a strategic partnership with Kiwi.com, the move to support Kiwi's global reach by enabling seamless payment solutions in burgeoning regions of the world is what their MO is. Uh, by introducing a wide array of local payment methods, its goal is to streamline the payment experience for travelers across Africa, Asia, and Latin America in 25 different countries. And some of these countries include Argentina, Ghana, Guatemala, India, Japan, and Turkey. You notice how, uh, you know, now the countries are becoming more and more exotic. I think, uh, you know, it was beneficial for a lot of these companies, these Ripple-related companies, to uh, trial some of the more liquid corridors, some of the more popular corridors at the beginning. And now they're getting into Guatemala, uh, Ghana, Turkey, right? The versatile range of payment options includes various cards, bank transfers, mobile wallets, and other regionally preferred methods, ensuring convenience and accessibility for users in these diverse locations. And guys, here's a quote. Kiwi.com's pioneering approach to making international travel accessible aligns perfectly with DLocal's mission to simplify payments globally. So that was uh, a representative from DLocal. We're excited to work together to improve the CX for travel purchases in emerging markets. Even the fintech manager at Kiwi.com said, our partnership with DLocal not only supports Kiwi.com's global presence, but also ensures a hassle-free payment experience for travelers in many regions. Thanks to DLocal's know-how in handling local payments, we're now able to accept a wide range of local cards and alternative payment methods through the emerging markets. So another uh, instance here where uh, a Ripple partner, a longtime Ripple partner, DLocal, is partnering up with another payments provider to provide more cross-border payments in 25 different countries spanning three different continents. So thought that was some great news. And it's not just cross-border payments. I mean, as this technology changes, we're going to start to see larger shifts, more meaningful shifts. Payment systems are changing. This one from Black Swan Capitalist Versan here the shift towards alternative financial systems is accelerating as the West further weaponizes and devalues the dollar. That's why the BRICS launched Embridge, 
On that note, many of the central banks have publicly partnered with Ripple to use XRP as a settlement mechanism. Remember, there are so many different central banks partnering up with Ripple, deciding that yes, they will be using XRP in the future. This is Professor Jeffrey Sachs explaining how this transition is happening. Listen to this. The U.S. thinks that it has the right to say which countries other countries right. trade with. And now, to come to the BRICS, the point is that the BRICS are going to make a non-dollar payment system. Uh, I've uh, been involved in many discussions with these experts because this is one of my areas of expertise, is how payment systems and monetary systems work. There will be non-dollar payment systems at a much larger rate in the coming years. Already, uh, Russia, uh, India trade, for example, which the U.S. tries to stop, is booming without, of course, any role of the dollar whatsoever. Uh, and this will become a general proposition. It's going to accelerate. The U.S. will feel it because right now the U.S. has what uh, General de Gaulle, President de Gaulle of France, uh, now 60 years ago, called America's exorbitant privilege, which is that because everybody uses the dollars, uh, the U.S. gets to issue dollar credits without too much consequence. But if other countries aren't using dollars, we're going to have to tighten our belts, balance our budgets, do all those things Americans hate and Congress people hate even more, which is actually have a, a budget that makes sense. God forbid we have a budget that makes sense, right? But anyway, I think this just kind of illustrates how, uh, you know, this de-dollarization is occurring and the BRICS nations taking no prisoners. Now, it is positive that uh, Ripple is already partnered with many central banks, including BRICS nation central banks. So the move to leverage a Ripple net type system, I think is imminent, guys. Wanted to thank Versan here for posting that. Now, we also did get this from Korea's Blockchain Week. We know Ripple representatives have been there. This one, courtesy of Jack the Rippler, Brad Garlinghouse did come out saying that the RLUSD could be issued issued within weeks, not even months, guys, weeks. So the quote is as such, we will certainly launch soon, weeks, not months, Garlinghouse said at the event. It's called the Ripple USD, the RLUSD, and it has been minted in that framework. He stated that plans for the token were made after the US coin, the USDC, the second largest stable coin by market cap of about $34 billion, lost its peg in March of 2023. We felt that there was an opportunity for a credible player already working with lots of financial institutions to lean into that market. Ripple first revealed its stablecoin plans in April, stating that the token would be 100% backed by US dollar deposits, short-term government treasuries, and other cash equivalents. Uh, as we know, they have been uh, testing last month. But guys, it is ready to go. It looks as though uh, it's going to be weak. So probably within this month, September 2024, uh, and so does that suggest something else? Does that reveal that uh, perhaps stablecoin regulations are going to be hammered out by this month too? Things that make you go, hmm, because, you know, we can't have a, uh, a U.S. stablecoin without solid stablecoin rules. And how is this going to affect the next phase of crypto adoption in the U.S.? Smoke here pointing this out, guys. This is a perfect time to clear the air on the direction blockchain is moving towards. Again, we have to remember this crypto industry is evolving beyond the days of meme coins and hype cycles and the Wild West speculation. We're now witnessing a shift towards more regulated, mature, and institutional-driven asset class. As blockchain technology continues to gain traction, it's no longer just about speculation, it's about real-world applications, compliance, and long-term value creation. Remember, institutional investors, regulatory bodies, and major financial firms are increasingly shaping the landscape, paving the way for cryptocurrencies to be integrated into the global financial system with greater stability and credibility the era of a speculative frenzy is giving way to a new chapter of sustainable growth and widespread adoption. And this is why I say, guys, this cryptocurrency bull run could be the last Wild west e kind of bull run that we uh, that we find ourselves in. And so, again, if you want to follow me at patreon.com slash working money channel, I uh, have had enough experience now, I think, that I can navigate through this bull run. And hopefully, you know, with this knowledge, now I'm going to be able to pinpoint the top of the market or at least get fairly close. I mean, nobody's going to ever be able to predict the exact top. But you can follow my journey at patreon.com slash working money channel. It is only $5 a month. I have kept it affordable on purpose so that, uh, you know, you guys can follow me throughout until the top. Because as Smoke does point out here, 
it is going to look different on the other side. It is going to look different with the regulatory clarity. I mean, this is also, uh, you know, part of the reason why I'm going to be holding some of my XRP for the long term, because we do not want to squander an opportunity for XRP to get up to three, four, five digits. Uh, so I wanted to thank Smoke for pointing that out. Another one here, though, from Smoke. OK, yes, the crypto industry has left its old Wild West label behind. Crypto assets have demonstrated to big banks and institutions that they can provide enterprise grade solutions to improve their products and services. And he just uh, gives another example of the MICA regulations. EU's market in crypto assets and the MICA regulation. Uh, MICA has not only offered legal certainty for all actors wanting to operate in the EU, but also the operational clarity that will fuel crypto innovation across the region and ultimately sets a precedent for other frameworks worldwide. Uh, with the final rules being put in place this year, we're nearly there in Europe. So guys, this also kind of speaks to this uh, this idea that we will see meaningful stablecoin regulations in the United States uh, within the coming uh, within the coming weeks. I'm guessing if Brad Garlinghouse is saying they're releasing the RLUSD uh, within weeks. Uh, this goes on to say the crypto industry has left its old Wild West label behind as it demonstrates to banks and institutions how the solutions it is building can improve payments, digitize financial processes and instruments, and better provide services to their customers. Digital assets is not just an option, but a necessity for those looking to stay relevant. So uh, all very, very important points here that I thought uh, I would point out from Smoke. Just look, guys, look how much activity we are currently seeing on the XRP ledger. New exchange pairs up and volume is rising. The globe is looking pretty today. Lots of lights on there. Guys, this represents XRP utility, and apparently it is lighting up. We are starting to see more utility around the globe. As per short, the FOMO here. And I just wanted to bring up this other point. One last point. From uh, somebody over there on Twitter, Jay Grissom, kind of pointing this out. Disruptive decentralized digital money was just a crazy idea until it happened. Disruptive ubiquitous electric vehicles were just a crazy idea until it happened. Disruptively overturning taxi authorities was just a crazy idea until it happened. So remember, guys, XRP holders sound crazy when they talk about disrupting the banking system until the day comes when they don't sound crazy. Keep your head in the game, my friends. It is called HODL for a reason. Hold on for dear life. So don't doubt for a second that XRP will be ubiquitous one day. And again, guys, if you want to see how I'm navigating this bull run, you can follow me at patreon.com slash working money channel. That is just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.